you do it. Ah, oh, Hunter. Sit down. Drink? Well, uh... This ain't on the service, and at this time of night, all is permitted. Scotch. Mm. Die hard, Hunter. Come again? You're watching everything. That's good. To watching. And that's precisely why I've summoned you here. I felt that your first assignment under your new job should be a matter of us, talking face to face, getting to know each other. Because I fear from now on our only exchanges will be telephonic. Who <laughs> needs watching? A small matter of internal protocol, Hunter. It's usual in the service to address one's superiors as sir. Who needs watching, sir? Fine. Yeah, you'll find us compensation that your subordinates will treat you in exactly the same way. Yeah. Now, this contains a specific request that the service has to make of your section. Now, the details, of course, I leave up to you, but I'll just fill in the background. It's tit for tat, really, the games we people play. The Cold War isn't over, it's just simply gone underground. Now, Moscow is about to expel, devoid of publicity, one of our junior cultural attaches for spying. Needless to say, isn't a spy. International diplomacy, not having reached the Sermon on the Mount, we have to use Old Testament methods, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Particular eye to be put out in exchange for our own non spies being selected. What we ask of your section is that he be harassed till he be withdrawn. Yeah. Well, why doesn't the Foreign Office just request his withdrawal on suspicion of spying, sir? Mm. Rules of the game, Hunter. They, for some unaccountable reason, are taking things quietly therein. No smears, insults, innuendos, or lies have appeared in Pravda. We will return the compliment at this end. Madoff will be withdrawn from London because of ill health. Madoff? Hmm. Adam Artemyevich Madoff, 39, good linguist. He's translated Pushkin, the Czech and French. Found him an extremely pleasant man when I met him. Hmm. Is he a spy, sir? Not they all. May I know why he has been chosen, sir? You have a job, Hunter. Do it. Yes, sir. There you are. Get those into your head. Telephone numbers. Right. X directory and classified. Correct. Well, who and why? No, oh, no. Not why. Just who. I think I should remind you, Cross, from now on there's going to be no special relationship. There's no holding hands under the desk, all right? Never knew you cared. Oh, yes, I care. I care because what you do affects me, and don't you forget it. All right, sir. Who? Well, it's not a hard one to start with. Nice and mucky little job. Harassment. Right up your street. Should enjoy it. Hmm, wife's name's Eleftina. Daughter? Daniela. Nice names. Medoff is your job. Well, aren't they part of the job? Sir. Aren't they part, part of the, the job? job? Sir. Oh, under the new management, are we allowed to have scruples? Hmm. Section policy hasn't changed, you know that. Ah, a cannon job. doing, Mr. Callan? Keeping your eyes on the road, I hope. Yeah, but I mean, you, you didn't tell me the other night. Why? Now, people interested in your welfare try to think of something you could do. The only straight activity they could come up with was driving. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, that's very kind of you, Mr. Callan. I mean, real taxi drivers. Well, I mean, They've got another way about, all the one-way streets, all that. You can read, I presume. I beg your pardon. Learn them. 
Yeah, but real taxi drivers, they have to take a test. You passed. Oh. Uh, Mr. Callan, the, um, the money from the fares, who do I give that to? You keep it. Won't be that much anyway. Hey, you say that again. On your dashboard, there finds itself an extra light. Yeah. Here. It's working. Of course it is, you nut. I'm working it. Mr. Cullen, I don't like this one little bit. Listen. All you have to do is wait for this little light to start flashing. And then when it does, you do what you're told. We've given you the motor so that we know exactly where you are. So you stay in the motor. It's ringing again. Adam? Hello, spy wife. What did he say? It doesn't matter. I heard and don't believe what you hear. He said spy wife. It's not true, Danira. He didn't say it was. No, 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 don't touch it. Yes? Spy wife. No, Zanamba. The accent was bad. It wasn't Russian. It has happened like this before. What the hell am I supposed to do, Mr. Kane? Dig for every bit of information myself? Well, what is this conspiracy of silence? I asked you for a report. There's nothing to report, sir. Why not? They're blank, sir. Everyone? As far as I... I asked you, everyone? Right, then I'll check them again, sir. Oh, son, you'll do that. But first of all, let's go through it again, shall we? Very slowly, for the kiddies. Now, British embassy staff of all kinds, of all occupations, of all ranks, how many have left Moscow, correction, Russia, in the past three months? Including the ambassador. Including the ambassador. As I said, sir, 78, and that's counting some who've come out more than once. Right. How many have gone back? 71, sir, and most of them are leave, sir. Any of them visit any of our sections? No, sir, only the ambassador and his immediate staff of foreign office briefings. As I said, sir, of the remaining seven, six will return within the next week and one won't. He's dead. Measles, sir. Measles, sir. Right. I want all those checked again and again. I want the name of anyone who does not go back, including the measles. So. I then want the same movement checks on newspaper correspondents, media men, trade delegations, anybody who's been resident in Moscow and has come out during the last six months or is coming out in the next six months. Yes. Mr. Cross, sir. Wheel him in. And your report came only to me. Sir. No cross-section contact. But I have None. to... None. Sir. Oh, yeah, look at it all. Pay your fiver, sir. Medoff is a setup. You're going through all those files. The only one you can't find is one Mark Callan. Why don't you tell me about Medoff? Well, he's hard working. He's uh, methodical. Goes straight to the embassy, straight home again. He's high up enough not to have to attend the functions. He organises. He's a family man, lives away from the embassy. He's uh, unflappable. Very pretty daughter. Mm. I suppose you're very pleased with what you've done. Mm, yeah, it's early days, yeah. Mm. Except it can't be very good, can it? Why not? Nobody's complained. How do I complain? What do I complain of for the hundredth time? Why does our phone ring? Where do I go? <laughs> what do I say? Dear Ambassador, my wife is nervous. Oh, I love you. Adam, I don't ask why you are really here. I'm a cultural attaché, nothing else. Why do you ask? Oh, I'm sorry. Perhaps you're right. I promised Daniela I would... I don't want Daniela one. Well. Oh, no. But me? No, you know that's stupid. Oh, Adam, please think. Nothing has, has happened to you. Nothing... 
unusual. No, nothing has happened. Are you lying? No. Oh, no, no. No, you're a good man. Nothing has happened to you like this before. You've never known it. But I have known it. I mean, to my parents it happened. I've seen it. Early morning, the bang on the door, the shouts, the orders, the search, the mess. The men waiting outside. No. Oh, I look full. I'll make coffee. Tina. Tina. Close the door. I'll do it. Oh, but Papa, Keep your mother indoors, I say. Clean. But there is glass. Yeah. I'll do it. I shall call the police. No. Then the embassy. No, I will do it. No. Just get a plaster. Oh, Adam, please. You've helped me now. Please help her. She's shocked as well. If I make a local complaint to the police, what of the embassy? If I make it official to the embassy, then they decide if it is worth the complaint. Oh, please, Adam. She's only trying to help. <laughs> I heard a shot, Adam. Shh. Please, no talking. It was nothing. This... this is nothing. Not worth complaining about. This is not provocation, huh? You mean this... this, this isn't the English? This, this is someone at the embassy with a pension for practical jokes? It was children. At this time of the morning? One children? Show them I found me. the pellet. Thank you. Please, please, darling, believe me. Oh, Adam. Please, you must believe me, but I don't know what it is. You mean it wasn't children? I promise you I'll find out. Where are you going? Clean the mess. Leave it. No. Why? It's not important. Well, if it's not important, let her do it. 
Let me see the pelt. You are too upset to discuss it. Or was it a bullet? Papushka? You're falling apart. <sighs> Anywhere there wasn't a back exit. Well, invent one, son. Why lonely? There is a taxi at the section's disposal. Your memo, sir. Look, it's A, B, C. You use a clown like that when he can't be seen. Not at seven o'clock in the morning when he's obvious. You're bloody lucky he was awake. So the girl saw you? Mm-hmm. We change the number plate, sorry. Has anything happened as a result? No, no, no. Even your flaming cock-ups result in a thundering clap of silence. There's anyone way that something will happen? You stick to routine. I'm not to touch her. You're not to touch her. There are other ways. Such as, sir? Well, why don't you think about it? It says in your file you're flexible, imaginative. We'll do better next term. Providing he keeps away from the little girls. I want Medoff pushed and pursued. I have no orders to stop. So we both better push. Well, so far we are on a blank report. Right, sir. I'll push. Well, let me see it. Point two two. Not a killer's bullet. You're not implying, comrade. Was Yayev that it doesn't matter you if You said it... there were other things. I said before and I say again, I have no wish to cause any inconvenience. At the same time, I wish to put my wife's mind at rest on my child. Of course, it's why I'm here. Answer my question. I have not told her about the car window. That was deliberate. When I worked at the Institute, I learned about time fuses. They must think you are a spy. Do I act like one? Go on. Oh, for three weeks now. It's so predictable, it's almost obscene. Exactly what we were briefed to expect. Parking tickets, punctures, buzzing my car, the window. Why can't they be original? All goods of all kinds we have not ordered arrive with no sender's name. Seventy plastic pulls. You want one? No. Take the lot. Raffle them. Plastic is non-destructible. These happenings. Always to you, not to your wife? She has the phone calls. He's English. The accent is so bad. Why have you waited three weeks to come to us? As I explained to Alif Tina, if I'm being plagued, you will say, please carry on. We want to know why the English security are so interested in you. I cannot win. You're less than generous to us, Adam Artemyevich. You are not here to win anything. You are here to produce concerts. Come in, Danira. I have seen him. Oh. The man who shot my mother. Then I shall want you to tell me sometime, but for the moment, perhaps you will go with your mother to Comrade Kondakov's house for an hour or so. Hmm? It has been arranged. Things a trifle beyond your control, Hunter. I didn't ask for this appointment. True. So sack me. You have a problem. I've got three. Oh, please do sit, Hunter. Aggression somehow always looks less dangerous when seated. Your problem? One. I find essential information hard to get. It's all there floating around somewhere. For some reason, I'm not allowed to see it. I need a file. I suddenly find it's marked non-movement. Really? My department has 14 separate projects, 13 of which I am fully briefed on. And you're doing excellent. But the Medoff case, no. Two, why am I, as supposed section head, not allowed to know why my victim has been chosen? I mean, how do I know how to, how to apply correct pressure? Nobody interferes with you? Look, there's splintered glass in a wife's face and no response. I mean, if I really started provoking, we could have massive repercussions, and then, sir, I would rather your head than mine. And your third? Me. I beg your pardon? Shall I tell you why I was considered so good in the field? Well, good men in the field don't get caught. You were. 
good men in the field are not bought and brought back by Her Majesty's government, sir, I was. Why were you so good in the field, Mr. Callan? I was trained never to take anyone or anything on trust. You start off with one simple premise. Everything smells. Yourself, the job you're doing, and the man who tells you to do it. You're told something, you test the opposite. So, not told why Madoff was chosen, you attempt to find out. That, among other things. Hold a junior attaché has been expelled, you endeavour to find him, or rather Kane does. And he found nothing. Yet. What if he did find something? That is totally irrelevant. Your job is very simple. Section head, your brief is clear, and you're wasting both our times for me to repeat it. Therefore, no need for me to answer your first point or your second. The third point, you. Well, let's just say that we, we chose you for your talents, your ability, but not your ugly chip on the shoulder. It's all right, Callan, we love you. Complete knowledge is absolute power, and that is dangerous. Not even I know everything. The day that Madoff leaves this country, preferably under a pall of shame, either by the back door or the front, your job is done. It's as simple as that. Thank you. You've been a great help. What have you done? Where have you been? What have you been saying? Why are the British harassing you? Am I suspected? My dear Adam Artemyevich, either you are an intelligence man I know nothing about, or you are innocent. Well, got you triple checked before you came here. Mm -hmm. Then? Oh, please, smoke. What fascinates me is to whom are you innocent? Oh, dear. In other words, my dear maker of music, are you a British spy or a Russian one? If I'm a British spy, why are they harassing me? Why, indeed. Well? To throw us. As you yourself said, we will become fascinated and would ask you to continue so that we might observe them. Then, presumably, their harassment would culminate in your kidnapping. You disappeared into the grateful arms of Queen Anne's Gate. Into a fairyland where Alaftina can buy her party frocks and denier her records in a less furtive manner. But I have no access to any secrets. If you are an intelligence man, your training is of sufficient interest. And if I am an intelligence man of vastly superior rank to yourself? Of sufficient standing to be unnoted in the embassy security section. And I am being harassed? Then they're on to you. Sir. And we'd better get you out. Well, Major Vasayev, which am I? I know you smoke. Yes, English. I've seen you smoking them at my concerts. One thing. Yes? Of the 300 of us here, why do they successfully pick on you? That is not your concern. Harassment is usually tit for tat. Now, if I check with Moscow... Tit for tat operates only in the case of disposable minor officials. You have not convinced me, Comrade Medoff, that you are anything other than a minor official. I will tell you one thing, and what happens to you afterwards is not my concern. But much to the surprise even of my wife and my daughter, when they return from Kornikov's, I will be here. Anyway, things are moving. Where? Oh, Vasyayev, the uh, senior security official from the embassy, was with him for hours. Maybe he can ship Meadow. He left alone then. Well, nobody cares who does it. So I'll get him out. By whatever means. You heard. Oh, no, sir. I want a firm directive from you. How far can I go? All right. Fine. At least I got somebody nervous. Sweet dreams, sir. <laughs> Mr. Callan, can I ask you a question? Do you have to sit right in my lap? He says that I want to know who my governor is. Is it you or is it him? Why? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? I mean, I'm not a bit of knicker elastic, stretched always. You tell me I've got to stay in the cabin, keep an eye on that little red light, and then old 
poncy bags there. He's got me nearly out on my feet watching out for that little girl. Watching what? Well, I mean, where she goes, who she's with, what car it's in, what time of day. Well, I mean, I can't do both, can I? It stands to reason. You do what he says. All right. Them out. Oh, one is usually round this corner. Yeah, that's him. I'm sure he's the one who shot the bottles. Look. I can't drive and look around. Oh, it's mad, isn't it? And the other one is somewhere down here. There, that's him. He's always there. How long has this been going on? Two weeks, since you couldn't take me in the car. Look, the taxi's following us. When I have my talk with Comrade Vasiliev, I will tell him. No, I will do that. Thursday. Why? Well, it's got everything. Time, space. The Medov looks really worried. You want my permission to lift her? So? Well, nothing else has made him twitch. All right, take her to Lambert House. Oh, good. That's got nurses. Everything fine. And I will be there to supervise. Okay, sir. Don't take any chances, Cross. And watch yourself. Yes, sir. What are you worried about? My concert on Wednesday. There's plenty of time. It still seems so little time. Sometimes I don't want to close my eyes. When I do, it's still the same old pictures. <laughs> Nothing changes. I will get you a pill. I need time. What time? Just have What for? You must trust me, whatever. Well, what's wrong? Is, if at any point between now and nine o'clock in the morning. In the morning? Vasayev, anyone from the embassy calls. Hedge. <laughs> Why? Just that. It doesn't matter about us, but Daniela, she must be protected. Adam, please. You have a headache? Yes. I will make her drink.
You can pack her clothes now. She's asleep. Now I know what you mean about no cross-section contact. I had more bother keeping our men out of my hair, sir. Can't you do something about that, sir? I have tried. But everywhere I went, there they were. No trespassers. Men I trained with. Yeah, we'll just simmer down. I mean, you'll get used to it. You take a seat, have your coffee. <sighs> well, did you find out anything? Yes, sir. The measles. John Harvey Stevenson, 52 a cook, was genuinely dead. His brother couldn't do too much for me. <laughs> anything else? In the last two days, the only one not going back is a newspaper correspondent. Neville Dennis. Dennis? Neville Dennis? Neville Dennis. Neville Dennis. Liz? Yes, sir? Listen, uh, check if we have a file on one Neville Dennis, uh, newspaper correspondent. Any category, sir? Could be Alpha. Right away, sir. The name means something to you, sir? Mm, I don't know. It's something. Where's he living? Here, yeah, London, sir. Address? Uh, oh, come on, come on. Uh, 36 Chapter Mansions, W1. Dennis. <laughs> yes. There is a Dennis file, sir, but it's not available. Who's got it? Archive, sir, but it is lead sealed. Special classification cannot be opened. And that is Neville Dennis, newspaper correspondent. You got your car? Yes. Well, come on then. If you're looking for your shooter, David, it's not there. Would you like some coffee? Black or white? It's quite corrosively instant, I'm afraid, but better than anything continental. It's all to do with national water. 
Ever tried making a good cup of tea in Paris? Or Leningrad? All those earth-stopping samovars. Why are you staring? I knew there was something about that name. <laughs> I'm sorry about the biff on the old proboscis. Well, I'm not really. I rather enjoyed it. But I've had nine years of being suspicious of people who paddle through my drawers without knocking. Of course, if I'd known you were coming, I'd have baked a cake and all that. But <laughs> who's to know anything? Yes. Black or white? My arm's aching. Black. Black is beautiful. Dennis Wingfield. Oh, thank goodness. I thought for one ghastly moment you were going to come out with a lot of nicknames. Old Peewit, remember on our course? Right, Peewit patrol, lead the other nits. <laughs> Cryptography, you were. And you were always very good at killing things and people. You know, it's funny about pseudonyms and working names and all that. Dennis Wingfield, Neville Dennis. One always seems to retain something of the original. I suppose it's sort of fixed, like strawberry marks under the armpit or bad potty training and all that. You have to cling on to something of yourself if you're insecure enough, or in the kind of trade where you have to deny your own name. Which is a pity. Names are beautiful. Names are diamonds. The only worthwhile things in the heads of toads, and we're all toads, aren't we? Well, well of course it's not loaded, you silly old sod. I remember something of what we were taught. <laughs> we will find your bullets in that beaten pewter thingamy up there. Yes, that's it. Or are you too far up in the world now to load your own chamber? How do you know I'm up in the world? Oh, I can see him shrieking with glee inside him like World Cup Willie caught him on a faux pas. <laughs> no, David, my old Dillinger. I was told. Oh? Goodbye. Word gets around. Yeah. Better? Much. David, I am a friend. Why are you here? You mean you don't know? No. I was told you might eventually try to see me. Why aren't you going back to Moscow? Oh, mission completed, old boy. Well, you can't go on planting the likes of me and Philby on respectable papers ad infinitum, can you? I mean, the days of... Dear editor, old chap, don't you think it'd be a frightfully good idea to use Neville Dennis straight from our cryptography department? He can write very much over. Why can't you go back? You do persist, don't you, David? Well? Coat hangers. Coat hangers. <laughs> well, the KGB got me over selling my car, all quite above board, of course. But, of course, I had to trot into Lubyanka and sign all tiny bits of paper, and they knew and I knew that they could use it against me on some trumped-up charge if at any time they wanted to get rid of me. So I was safe, which was the point of the exercise. Obviously. Oh, don't interrupt. You wanted to know. I was safe. I could visit places never seen by white men because they could trundle me out at any time. Do you know, it's so much more healthy being corrupt. All those unhealthy, pure people at the embassy can't go out chewing each other's toenails for sex, their cars marked. At least we could take taxis. You're wasting my time. So I was asked as a planted agent. Now, it's all right me talking to you like this because I'm off the books now. No more use to man nor beast. Anyway, I was asked... <laughs> I had thought it would be awfully glamorous, you know, like you, killing people. I was detailed to go to a specific hotel in a place which will be nameless, spend the weekend, write up a glittering parody of their beetroot, beetroot statistics, steal a coat hanger, and come back. <laughs> the Russians waste nothing. It was all bloody clever, actually. New multiple stress metal was being used in a new supersonic fighter we wanted to know more about. The scrap was sent to a coat hanger factory. This specific hotel had a coat hanger. Now we know what the fighter's made of. I enjoy talking about my contributions to modern life. Yes, I know you do. That's why I came here. 
Now, Dennis, suppose you tell me about the press center in Moscow, hmm? What's new? Press briefings in Moscow. You go there as a correspondent to find out what the news is, right? Uh, then the press officer comes out in the middle of the sherry. Thursday, the British. I say, you chaps, what's new? Friday, the Americans. Hell, you guys, what's new? As if I know. You better. Danushka, Danushka. Come on, hurry up. Papushka. Oh, no, no, come on, Dennis. Let's have some answers. Mm. Come on. I, no? I don't know. I don't, don't know. know. Of course you know, Dennis. <sighs> oh, Dennis, Dennis, Dennis. It's quarter past eight in the morning. You're a real treat to work with, you know that. I was well trained. Dennis. Come on, <laughs> answer my questions, eh? Look, I never lived in the embassy. I don't know what oh, went on in the dear, embassy. We never saw it inside. Been. Come on, eh? Listen, Dennis. <laughs> Dennis. I mean, I can give you the full sweaty treatment if you want it. No, I don't. Then answer my question. Fact or gossip? Was any of our people harassed over there? Well, I, I heard of, I knew of no one. Was anybody deported? No one at the moment. And you are the only person up until recently who is not going back? I'm not going and back. And you are not a junior cultural attaché? Oh, my dear, I'm too old to be junior, too thick to be cultured, and we're both unattached. Right now, Dennis. Who told you about me? I'm a martyr. Dennis. Look. Now, suppose you were told to harass one of their people over here as a reprisal for their harassing one of our people on that side. And then, Dennis. And then, Dennis. You found out that nobody on our side was being harassed over there. What would you think that the whole point of that exercise was? Hmm? Hmm? Now look, Dennis, I want a straight answer, please. Now, it can be your own, or one that you've been told. But just remember, nobody but nobody is going to miss you. Maybe they're doing it to find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, find out what? Or to find out just who Moscow would push in retaliation, whether they'd pick on one of our people they wanted to get rid of, mm. one of our spies. Yes, yes, which would lead us to suppose. That, that they were on to the genuine article. It's routine. Yes, yes, go on, you're doing well. Doing well. Go on, go on. Of course, they could be too late. The genuine article could have left already. He could have had urgent orders to leave Moscow in the last two days and not to return. Yes. Like me! Can you tell us the time, please? Can you tell me the time, please? Yeah. Please. Please take me. I want asylum. Behind him, the Volga they are watching. Papushka, it's him! How can I trust you? 
I would not break the daughter. Please, I have no time. Give me your gun. I have no gun. In the back, quick! Where's your wife? She is safe. I will tell your officials where to collect her. I hate him! Don't take it for off me! Don't! The one who shot my mother! Don't! Menor! She all right? Well, that's done it. Is she okay? Look at her. The girl's in that room. She's still unconscious. The mother's in here under sedation, and Mr. Medoff is in there. Thank you, Major. Sorry about your little girl. A decision about you and your family uh, is not my concern. However, I do have to ask you just two questions. Yes. Are you an intelligence agent? No. Why are you asking for political asylum? If you harass me mistakenly, it must be. My embassy security officials want to know why suspicion breeds suspicion. No one ever recovers from being suspect. I, I have a daughter. I wanted her protected. And once I was suspect because of your harassment, I lied to them. I was a KGB colonel. But they could have checked me out in only two days. But doesn't it mean, if you harass me, that for some reason you want me? Go on. Why? Why you want a man who's a music organizer, only that? A man who's in love with only language I'll never know. But I tell you this, sir. This moment I hate the world and everything. And I hate you, sir, because... Sorry. I am sorry. <laughs> 